Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, August 4th. Today we will not see many significant impacts across the Great Basin. Still warm and dry conditions continue. We may see a couple isolated storms over part of the Uinta Mountains or part of central Idaho, but very isolated today. And then the greater impacts are expected on Wednesday and Thursday as an area of low pressure moves in off the west coast. This will bring us gusty winds and dry conditions over southern areas where we still have uh, plenty of large fire activity and also possibly some lightning up across central and southwest Idaho. And this lightning may also start developing over parts of northern Nevada. This will be the main impact for the northern areas. As we move into Thursday, we will see those gusty winds push a little bit further east, mainly across Utah. And then we could also see some breezy winds over parts of Idaho, however, relative humidity will be increasing a little bit and also some isolated thunderstorms remaining. But any, th any lightning we see on Wednesday or Thursday is likely to be on the drier side. Over the last 24 hours, we've only seen some lightning over far northeastern areas of the geographic area in Idaho bordering Montana. These thunderstorms produced about a tenth of an inch of rainfall. Otherwise, a couple of strikes over far eastern Utah. Great Basin fire activity was light with 15 new fires for 563 acres across the Great Basin, but we did continue to see growth in our large fire activity, which is across the basin. Over the last seven days, we've seen precipitation mainly targeted over the northern areas. Some areas have seen above normal precipitation within the seven days due to thunderstorm activity, but most areas remain on the drier side, especially over northern and western Nevada, down into southern Nevada, parts of the Arizona Strip, and parts of Utah. Current ERCs are still high across the area with ERCs above the 90th or 97th percentile over the southern half of the Great Basin. ERCs further north are between about the 70th and 80th percentile across Idaho. How these ERCs relate to normal, with the very dry conditions we've seen and the lack of the monsoon this year over the southern half of the Great Basin, ERCs are well above record highs for the time of year over much of the southern half of the Great Basin. Further north, ERCs are just approaching normal across parts of Idaho. 100-hour fuel moisture, however, is critically low over all areas of Nevada, most of Utah, and even into southern and western parts of Idaho. The satellite image from this morning shows a weak trough off the west coast. This will swing a little bit further east as we approach Wednesday and Thursday and lift north, and again will be attributed to our windy conditions in the south and also the lightning potential in the north. So our weather picture for later today, again, that weak trough, still plenty of dry air in place. Again, some of our areas that aren't quite as dry could see a few isolated storms over parts of the Uinta Mountains and then over parts of central Idaho. However, no high risk issued for today as any lightning will be very isolated. Relative humidity will remain below 10% over the southern half of the Great Basin and up into the teens across Idaho. Winds will generally be light today. We may see some winds about 15 to 20 miles per hour over southern areas of the Great Basin but these would be considered more light to moderate winds with lighter winds further north. As we move into Wednesday, this area of low pressure off the west coast starts to swing northeast. And again, this is what should generate some isolated thunderstorms over parts of Idaho, also back west into Oregon, northern California, and potentially northern Nevada. So we do have some high risk for this event right now over parts of Idaho, but we will continue to watch northern Nevada as well. Also, winds will be picking up, and we do have some high risk for winds over southern Nevada, the Arizona Strip, and southern Utah. So again, these wind gusts will generally be between about 30 and 35 or up to 40 miles per hour with relative humidity in the single digits. We'll also have poor overnight recoveries continue over the next couple of nights, so that will be an impact for our ongoing incidents. On Wednesday, again, driest conditions over the southern two-thirds of the region, below 10 percent. And you can see in the image on the right how those winds will be increasing over the southern half of the Great Basin. Again, most wind gusts between about 30 and 35 miles per hour. We'll also see some breezy winds, especially associated with possibly some gusty outflow winds over parts of northwest Nevada. Um, and then if we see any lightning activity further north, obviously gusty outflow winds would be the main threat out of those storms. As we move into Thursday, we will see those windy conditions push a little bit further east with continued dry weather. So we have plenty of high risk for wind and low relative humidity across Utah and also into parts of eastern Idaho. Relative humidity across Idaho will be increasing on Thursday, but we still could have some critically dry and windy conditions over eastern Idaho. Looking at the relative humidity, you can see again, generally single digits over the southern half of the basin. Relative humidity comes up a little bit over northwest and northern Nevada up into Idaho. 
And then you can see the wind picture on the right showing those gusty winds over much of the eastern half of the Great Basin. So again, those breezy winds across Idaho could be a concern in some areas. However, relative humidity will be increasing. Don't really have a whole lot on the three-day forecast amount of precipitation. Again, any thunderstorms that do develop over the northern third of the Great Basin um, as we move into Wednesday and Thursday will be certainly on the drier side and moving fairly quickly. As we move into Friday, we will see um, quieter conditions. Again, we could see um, the dryness mainly, conf mainly confined to far southern areas of the Great Basin with no high risk. And as we move into Saturday, we have another weak trough of low pressure off the west coast. We could start to see some lightning activity along the Sierra front uh, over the weekend, so we will be watching that for any increase in lightning potential, but continued dry conditions elsewhere and maybe even some breezy winds possible over parts of Idaho at times. Right now, no high risk. We will continue to monitor the weekend situation as we get a little bit closer. And then similar conditions on Sunday. As we move into early next week, Likely the winds will start to decrease. We may see a little bit more moisture in the north, but we'll be watching that. Right now, no high risk. We'll just continue to dry out as we go later this week and through the weekend. No change on our seven-day total precip as any lightning activity will occur here on Wednesday and Thursday. However, we may see a couple little blips there you can see in green along the Sierra front, and that would mainly be for any lightning that might occur this weekend. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us from August 11th through the 17th, we will see a cooler pattern than what we've been seeing recently. Still dry, especially over the eastern half of the Great Basin, really not looking at any moisture to move into this area. Um, but we could see some cooler and possibly some wetter conditions in the northwest, maybe clipping parts of central Idaho. Also with, these, with this pattern, we may see a little bit more wind as we go towards the middle of the month. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.